Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last couple of years and this is a brewery that is very, very highly regarded in Scotland at the moment. So it's always nice to try their new beers when I come back to the motherland and I'm hoping this is another good one. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head over to Glasgow to Yoker to be specific and we're going to have a look at another beer from Overtone Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called the Captain I'm Fading. It comes in at 8% ABV and this one is another New England hazy imperial double whatever you want to call it IPA. I've heard very good things about this one so hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. But Overtone are known for their New England hazy IPAs. We've had other styles from them before as well, right enough. But uh, you do tend to get very solid beers from Overtone Brewing Company, in my experience. So always cool to try the new things from these guys. But um, yeah, let's crack on then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Overtone Brewing Company before and hopefully we can add some more to that beyond the ones I have just now in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to at the moment because I'm at home in the motherland and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about overtone brewing company once again then so overtone brewing company as i've mentioned to you already are based in glasgow and the company was founded back in 2017 by Bo Wei wang who's originally from beijing in china and he'd been a home brewer for a number of years prior to founding the company, but the name Overtone comes from Bowie's love of techno music. And this is why you get all these lovely uh, artworks on the, the cans as well, which is pretty cool, I have to say. I know that my friend Peter, the clueless drinker, he loves the Overtone artwork. He loves the beer as well, right enough. But that's it. Um, but yeah, Bowie hired Dan Miller, who's from New Hampshire in New England over in America as his head brewer. And uh, Dan had previously worked as a head chef and also as a brewer in England, New York, and also in Scotland for Six Degrees North, who are a very nice Belgian style brewery based in the northeast of Scotland. I would recommend that you check those guys out. But uh, also involved in the brewing side of things is Martin Conaghan, who has worked in the craft beer scene in New Zealand for a number of years. And he takes part in the brewing and does a lot of other things to do with that side of the company as well. But the brewery itself can be found in the New Albion Industrial Estate in Yoker near Renfrew and Clyde Bank and they began brewing their beers back in 2018. But they don't have a fixed range as such. There are beers that appear uh, very regularly such as Ouija and things like this but they're always brewing different beers and uh, different styles as well actually they're experimenting with a lot more different styles these days but as of September 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced just over 50 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and like I mentioned earlier these guys are known mainly for their New England hazy IPAs but you get quite a few Imperial Stouts from them they've done a good few West Coast IPAs as well they're starting to play around with a few different fruity sours and things like that too so uh, yeah and every so often you'll see a kind of random style from them. We've had a lager from them. Uh, I've seen recently that they've done a Hefeweizen and uh, I'm sure we'll see some other interesting things from them over the next little while. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Overtone Brewing Company for the moment. One of the really leading breweries here in Scotland at the moment. So uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. And uh, these guys and Vault City are probably two of the kind of smaller craft breweries that you're most likely to find exporting over to Europe at the moment. So yeah, Overtone Vault City are two of the breweries to keep an eye on here in Scotland at the moment. So uh, yeah, that is it for your brewery history section. So if you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery websites. We said you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's crack on then and have a little look at this beer itself. So so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork then before we um, open this one up. As you can see, very nicely 
uh, presented as always the camera because this one's got a shiny edge to it the camera obviously hates it because we've got the lights uh, to light up the room behind me but uh, yeah as I said 8% New England double IPA you can see just plain silver top can on this I think I paid about £6.50 for this can so that's what about maybe eight, seven, what's that about seven euros fifty eight euros something like that so that'll be about 80 kroner um, more expensive that you know it's actually more expensive to buy craft beers here in Scotland than it is to system like in Sweden which I find uh, quite unusual but um, yeah I bought this one at um, Ellie's Cellar in, uh, in Dollar actually when I, I just took a wee drive along there because I know they've got some nice craft beers but um, yeah 8% New England double IP this one is hot with cashmere citra and El Dorado and um, we know these hops all quite well of course cashmere it gives you that kind of melony, lemon limey sort of thing. Uh, Citra gives you a lot of a lot of mango. But obviously, it's got quite a little bit of a lemon limey kind of character to it as well. And El Dorado is a lovely kind of. It gives you a good bit of passion fruit, but also a good bit of mango and apricot and things like that as well. It's quite a tropical hop. That all three of the hops are American. I believe Cashmere and Citra are about fourteen percent alpha acid, and I think El Dorado is a little bit less at about twelve, if I remember rightly. But uh, yeah, four hundred forty milliliter can. This eight percent New England double IPA. Let's get stuck in. The captain, I am fading from Overtone Brewing Company in Yoker over in Glasgow. Ooh, I was a bit worried it was going to go there. The can felt pretty solid. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste. And then my first Overtone beer since January. Here we are. I forget what the last one we reviewed. I think the last one we reviewed actually was <clears throat> one of the Imperial Stouts, maybe Dusty Miller. So yeah, this should be quite nice, but there's still a wee bit left in the can, but we'll put that in before we actually taste the beer. But um, yeah, this glass, I've been noticing this in the last couple of reviews. I forgot that this glass gives you a really good head on the beers actually. Um, but yeah, as you can see with this one, um, it's poured a lovely, very bright and very rich kind of uh, slightly, you know, there it is, kind of rich, dark yellow, this one, I would say. But uh, you can see that the head on the beer is just over a finger. I'd say it's a lovely kind of cream-coloured head there. I wouldn't describe that as perfect white. I'd say it's more of a kind of creamy colour. But yeah, in terms of the colour of this beer, I'd say a lovely, very rich yellow. Now, remember, the colour of your beer is determined by, one, the type of malts that you use. This determines the magnitude of the colour. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. A New England IPA like this one is going to have a boil of probably about 90 minutes. Usually between 60 and 90 minutes for these beers. Um, but uh, yeah, the other things that can affect your colour of course are any adjuncts that you put in and any barrel ageing that you do. But uh, with a New England IPA you don't tend to have to worry about these things. But uh, yeah, that's usually when it comes to sour beers and stuff. But the level of haze in this one for an 8%er is pretty impressive. Um, but kind of about what you would expect at the same time. And remember, the level of haze in these beers is determined by the oak content, the wheat content, and yeast is also going to play a role in that as well. There's no real rule to it. It varies from brewery to brewery and recipe to recipe. But uh, yeah, this one certainly has a lot of very nice haze to it. Um, which is, you kind of would expect that to be honest from a, an 8% New England double IPA and it's certainly within the right kind of colour range. I would describe this one as being a sort of mango and pineapple juice sort of colour. I always like comparing these beers uh, to different fruit juices because that's really just what their appearance reminds me of. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there which as you can see has gone down to about a one third half finger at the moment. So uh, yeah, looks good. So let's see. How we get on with the aroma of this one then nothing really surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance so let's get cracking with this that smells really good actually um yeah the aroma of this beer i think is um the aroma of this beer is pretty nice actually it smells pretty damn fresh but you can really smell that distinctive thing with cashmere coming out of it straight away um, but yeah, I'm going to say straight away, it comes across as quite a soft, smooth and juicy New England IPA. Now, as I've said to you before, I think when it comes to these New England IPAs, there's a few different directions you can take these beers. They can be sort of farmhousey and yeasty. They can be kind of more rye leaning and grainy. They can be wheaty and bitey, oaty and creamy, barley malt leaning and bready. Or they can be a little bit sweeter and more kind of uh, brown sugary. So yeah, you get all of these kind of things from, um, you do get all of these kind of things 
from uh, from New England IPAs, but usually you'll find that they display a few of these characteristics. And this one, to me, comes across as a little bit sort. It actually comes across as a little bit farmhousey, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, I think this one's got a little bit of farmhousey character. It's got a bit of that soft white bready kind of thing to it. You can smell a bit of the wheaty bite, and you also got a bit of the kind of oaty creaminess in it. So let's try and break down the aroma of the beer a little bit more and describe it a bit more kind of succinctly, I guess we could say. So the backbone of this beer absolutely is a very soft kind of white bready character in there. So we've got that nice kind of fresh, fluffy uh, white bread coming out of it. You can get one or two elements of bread crust in this one, but I think that really takes a back seat to just a base of very soft kind of fluffy white bread. I think that's really what's going on in this one. You can smell the wheat in this one kind of thickening the beer out a little bit and you do get a bit of that wheaty bitiness at the back of the nose, I would say. Absolutely, a nice kind of wheaty bitiness at the back of the nose there. But there's also a little bit of a kind of smooth, uh, there's also a little bit of a kind of smoother, creamy sort of thing. Um, and I do like that about this beer too. I mean, the thing with the overtone stuff is you always get it and it's nicely balanced. It's always got a little bit of complexity to the malt base. And I think that often, you know, people focus, when it comes to IPAs, there's a bit too much focus on the hops. I think you've got to have a good malt base to back it up. And, you know, um, having that proper balance in the beer, I think, is also a very important thing as well. A lot of people underestimate the importance of the yeast and the malt base when it comes to IPAs. But... Um, this one certainly has it quite nicely. I would say that the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer, you start to get more of the oatiness coming out of this one as well. You can smell that slightly smooth, sweet, and you know, very slightly dry, oaty character to this one. This beer in the aroma, though, doesn't have all that much sweetness to the malt base. Um, yeah, this one, you do get a wee bit of that Werther's Original kind of butterscotchy type thing out of it um, and uh, I mean eight percent it's a uh, you know it's this is quite a boozy beer and uh, not the booziest you'll get from overtone right enough but um, you should get a little bit of brown sugar out of this one and you get just a little touch of it so I think that will come out maybe more in the actual flavour of the beer but the malt base for me is quite soft and bready a bit of wheaty bite and this nice bit of oatiness in there and you do get a bit of that kind of farmhousey slightly woody yeasty kind of thing coming out of it as well so um yeah all things that you would expect of a new england ipa but let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then before we taste it so hoppy side of things i'd say you do get a little touch of earthiness out of this one and i think you know cashmere as we say cashmere's got really interesting interactions with with yeasts in these beers. Cashmere always gives you some really interesting stuff and we'll talk about that a bit more in the flavour. But cashmere really, in the aroma, what you'll find is that you get a lot of melon that kind of mixes in with the sort of yeasty, woody side of the beer. And that's what, that's what cashmere really gets up to in these things. It's a really, cashmere can be a very dominating hop actually when it comes to, to New England IPAs. But um, yeah, on the green side of things, as I say, there's a little bit of earthiness. I find that this one, it's got a little bit of floral character, it does have a wee bit of floral aromaticity, but I think the green component in this beer really leans towards <clears throat> a kind of grassy, zesty sort of thing. And when you've got citra, you've got cashmere in this one, these are quite, you know, lemon, limey, leaning hops to a degree. Um, although, you know, citra's got a lot of mango as well. But yeah, you do get quite a bit of a kind of grassy, zesty sort of thing with, um, with this one. So I like how that goes together. Um, green component of this one kind of suits the overall vibe of the beer. A bit grassy and zesty and this beer on the fruity side of things which we'll go to now. The fruity side of this beer is fairly well balanced but it does lean towards that kind of lemony, lemon limey, citrusy zesty kind of thing. So yeah I would say on the, um, I would say on the, um, you know on the malty on the malty yeast, uh, on the, not on the malty side of things, on the fruity side of things, you've got some really interesting stuff going on. So you can definitely get a wee bit of the stronger passion fruit, which will be from the El Dorado. You can get a bit of that. There's quite a lot of mango for me. With this one, and that'll be both Citra and uh, El Dorado that are giving you that. You get a few little tones of, you know, apricot and things, and I think that's most likely in this one to come from the from the uh, from the Citra. Because Citra's got all that kind of complexity to it. I think. You know, in my experience, El Dorado is a bit more passion fruit and mango. So that'll be why these these aromas are coming out quite a bit. But the thing is, mixed in with that tropical note, you really get a lot of melon. And that's cashmere. As I say, cashmere can be quite a dominating hop when it comes to these um to these to these New England IPAs. Cashmere really 
can go in and sort of take over the flavour. And to a degree, it's doing that. You can smell that in the aroma here. But um, for me, this beer has a lot of limey character to it. It's got a lot, you get the melon in there, but I get a lot of lime out of this one. Um, you can smell that right away on the nose with this beer. You get a lot of lime out of this beer, and then you've got the melony notes kind of um, backing it up. You do get a wee bit of a kind of sharper, zippier lemon in there. But no, for me, there's a lot of melon and lime character out of this one. And it's, like I say, the cashmere kind of dominates uh, the aroma. There's maybe a wee hint of like gooseberry or something in there. And that's citra that's going to give you that. Citra can sometimes give you a little bit of a goose gooseberry lychee sort of thing. But no, for me, the cashmere is the, the big melon notes and then the, the limey, mainly lime rather than lemon lime, I would say. Um, that's what you're getting out of the aroma in this one, I think. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting smelling beer, this, and I have to say I'm about ready to taste this one, so I think we should go for it. So, rest of it into the glass. There we are. So this one is the Captain I Am Fading, 8% New England Double IPA from Overtone Brewing Company in Yoker in Glasgow. I think this is going to be pretty damn nice, so let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, cheers. <laughs> pretty damn solid I have to say as always but yeah thumbs up to Overtone Brewing Company once again I mean these guys are I mean obviously I drink more Swedish and Danish IPAs um, these days but these guys are definitely up there with the likes you know Stieg Berriot's OO Brewing um, all of these guys that are doing the New England Hazy's Hooli Brewery in uh, Skåne as well Um you know, overtone really, the, the, you can see why there's a lot of um, kind of hype around this brewery. Um, obviously, the New England IPAs are the are the kind of are still the sort of hyped styles at the moment. But we've had some really good examples of this style over the last little while. We've had some very good West Coast IPAs from them as well. And the Imperial Stouts are pretty nice too, I have to say. But um, yeah, overtone deserve the kind of plaudits that they're getting in my experience. So yeah, thumbs up to to them on this one as well. But this is very very nice. This. Um, it's a bit difficult to think back to the IPAs that I've had from them before because it's you know been so long, but um, you know well I say so long six months nine months or something like that, but um, yeah you know you're always guaranteed a solid New England IPA with these guys and that's why I love trying their beers when I come back home. So yeah, but this is another very very nice one. And what I would say about it is. It's actually got a little bit more kind of bite and zip to it than I thought it was going to have from the um, from the aroma. I thought this one was going to be you know kind of quite airy and, and kind of yeasty to a sense, and you get a little bit of that in the aftertaste. But this beer does have a wee bit of bite and zip to it, which I can uh, which I can certainly appreciate. So let's try and break this one down for you then and describe the flavour a wee bit more kind of succinctly. So straight away across the middle third of your palate, then you can feel that nice kind of bread crust quality coming out of the beer. The bread crust for me is the backbone of the beer. But you also get that sort of, you know, if you have a fresh kind of tiger roll or a fresh kind of, uh, you say, like a sort of fresh bread roll, and you can, it's almost like you've got a little bit of that kind of floury thing. You know, you get the flour on the bread crust. You can feel that right across the middle third of your palate and I guess the back third of your palate as well. So yeah, that bread crusty, floury, bread crusty sort of thing. That's the backbone of this beer for the middle third and the back third of your palate. On top of that, of course, you get a layer of white bread and it's, to a degree, it's got a little bit of density to it, but otherwise, you know, it is quite, at the same time, it is quite light and fluffy. And then above that, you do get, you can feel the wheat just kind of thickening the beer out as well, actually. And those things that I've mentioned to you are middle third and back third of the palate. But let's focus more on the kind of middle third of your palate for just now. So middle third of the palate then, at either end of that middle third of the palate you get a nice kind of bread crusty type quality um, to this beer. So you can feel that there, but then on top of the wheaty layer that I was talking about, that's when you get the oats, and the oats are nice and smooth but also thick and they get, you know, they do dry out a little bit, I think, which is, uh, which is nice. Um, so in the middle of your palate you do get a little bit of that kind of drier but smooth oaty kind of thing there and the oats I think do 
um, the oats do kind of sweeten up in this one, which um, which is great. So it's got a lovely kind of dryness and smoothness um, to it, which I can certainly appreciate. But on the, um, as we say, on the, on top of the oats, you have a very nice, um, as we say, on top of the oats, you have a very nice kind of, um, little, you do get a bit of sweetness out of this one. This is what I was saying in the aroma. You don't pick up too much of the sweetness. Uh, in the aroma of this beer, but in the flavour it does actually come out. So on top of the oaty kind of thickness that you've got there, it's almost like you've got a kind of big circle in the middle of your palate, and that's where the oats are. You get that nice, thick, smooth, but then as I say, slightly drier, oaty kind of element out of this beer. But on top of that, you get this nice Werther's Original type quality, that kind of butter candy, butterscotchy type thing. Um, and then that is, you know, obviously the brown sugars in the beer are the ones that are covering up the... Um, they're the ones that are kind of covering up the um, the the OT side of things. They, these are the ones that are kind of covering up. Well, not the OT, the boozy side of things. Brain isn't working. Um, the brown, yeah, the brown sugary notes are the things that are covering up the sort of boozy part of the beer in this one. So, yeah, it's you. I wouldn't say this beer. It does have a wee bit more sweetness than was apparent in the aroma, but at the same time, it's not too sweet actually. Um, I think we have had slightly sweeter ones from uh, from Overtone, but I think the whole vibe of this beer goes together quite nicely, actually. The malty side of the, the beer is done really nicely. It's got a bit more thickness to it and a bit more, kind of, um, as I say, it's got a bit more thickness to it and I think a wee bit more boldness. So I do like that about this beer for sure. So, yeah, the malty side of this beer, I think, is um it's very very nicely done I have to say so that's um the middle third of the pattern this one is very nicely done once again we've got another double IP we've got another two double IPs from these guys to look at actually so I'm going to be curious to see how they compare to this one but I think we can go on have a look at the back third of your palette then so the border region between middle third and back third of your palette again you've got a little bit of a kind of again you've got a little bit of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing with this one so you can feel a little bit of a kind of bready build up in this one nice little bit of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing and then um you just a bit more of a kind of concentrated greenness but yeah underneath that as we say kind of um bread crusty base white bread the thickening wheat and the wheat does have a wee bit of bitiness a bit more bitiness to it on that back third of your palate then on top of that you can feel the more airy yeasty bready notes coming out of the beer so as always when you start at the back of the palate on this one, you can feel the flavours a bit taller. As you go forward, it condenses down, and then as you go into the middle third of the palate, as you go into the middle third of the palate, you can feel there's a more kind of, um, you know, you can feel there's a bit more of a kind of concentrated, um, as we say, there's just, you know, the flavours are a little bit more kind of concentrated and dense, if you like. Uh, on the malty side of things but yeah it works it works but yeah on that back third of your palate the further you go into the aftertaste with it you do get a slightly kind of woody farmhousey type vibe out of the beer um, and that kind of plays into cashmere as well which we'll come to just in a second but yeah let's move on to the hoppy side of things then so back corners of the palate there's certainly a wee bit of earthiness there you can pick that up straight away but as you move further forward you get a little bit of herbal quality and then as you push towards the kind of front corners of your palate there's definitely a nice big floral aromaticity to this one which uh, you can pick up uh, which you can pick up right away but round the front curve of the palate you've got a nice little bit of a kind of lighter grassy sort of thing going on which I do like there's a nice sort of grassy zesty um, kind of vibe yeah, there's a nice kind of grassy zesty vibe to this beer which is uh, which is good um, and yeah I think the green component of this one it's a wee bit more balanced than it was in the aroma, but I think it, the further you go into the aftertaste, it really does lean a little bit towards that kind of, um, it really does lean towards that kind of zesty, uh, you know, that, that kind of grassy, zesty sort of thing, which is good. But uh, yeah, interesting. So let's focus on the front third of your palate then. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate. As you go, as you go... Um, you know, as you go um, into that mid that border region, you can feel there's a little bit more of a kind of bread crusty, grainy sort of thing than the base of that front third of your palate is um, the base of that front third of your palate. I would say is a little bit more um, 
it's kind of soft and white bready, I guess you could say. But then on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. So this one is kind of what you'd expect if you know these hops. So at the back of that front third of your palate, there is a wee bit of passion fruit. And as you move further forward, it does develop into more of a mango sort of thing. This is the citra and the... Um, the, the citra and the Eldorado that's given you this, you do get one or two little apricotty notes out of it, which I think are more attributed to the citra, but then you get the, 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 the melon from the cashmere kind of, um, kind of coming out a wee bit more as well. So yeah, definitely a wee bit of a, yeah, I would say a wee bit of a kind of, melony kind of thing from the cashmere absolutely i would say that and that kind of um yeah i would say that the melon kind of blends in a little bit the kind of melon the melon blends in with the kind of tropical fruit side of things but it also creeps and in, creeps into the front half of that front third of your tongue as well but when you move into the front half of the front third of your tongue the beer the fruitiness becomes distinctly more oily and that's when you start to get you know the kind of big limey notes coming out of this one and again that's cashmere but citra is also going to contribute to that as well and um, i do get a wee bit of a more oily gooseberry towards the very kind of front tip of the tongue and i think that's most likely attributed to citra um, but yeah quite a lot of limey character for me a lot of melon a lot of lime but you do have those kind of tropical notes coming out of this beer as well but um yeah i really like how this one goes about its business in that sense it's it's a really nicely constructed beer this actually um but in some of the other beers that we we have from overtone we've got some interesting hops um as well but yeah for me there's a lot of melon in this one and quite a bit of limey character i just noticed on the back here it does give you a little bit of a description of it. So it says a smooth double dry hop, double IPA balanced with cashmere, citra and eldorado hops. Enjoy flavours of honey, honeydew, melon, pineapple, juicy peach and hints of apple. Mm. I actually would, yeah. As I say, I, I would say more. For me, it's got, I get quite a bit of a kind of a mango note out of it. There's a wee bit of pungent passion fruit. And as I say, I do get the melon, get a lot of melon out of this one, but I get quite a bit of lime, I think, as well. And, um, yeah, a gooseberry. I get a kind of a more oily gooseberry, I think, towards the front of the palate. So it's interesting with this. Um, you know, peach. I would just expect peach to be a little bit sharper, but I can see where they're coming from with the peach. The pineapple, nah. But yeah, it's always interesting to compare your tasting notes to uh, brewer's tasting notes and things like that. But whatever uh, you can say about this beer, I find this one to be more kind of um, kind of citrusy leaning, if that makes sense. It tends to be more kind of leaning towards the citrusy fruits rather than the tropical fruits, actually. I would definitely say that about this one. But the fruitiness does develop a nice oily character the further that you go into the aftertaste with this beer. But I think on that note, we can go to the mouthfeel and round off the review. So... So with this beer, I would say this one is kind of towards the top end of mid-bodied. The carbonation is very, very smooth. I think this beer does get thicker the more that you drink of it, but that also just could be due to uh, you know the temperature increasing and so on. But yeah, this is quite a nice, smooth um, New England Double IPA. It's not the kind of creamiest that I've come across. I do find this one to be a little bit more sort of farmhousey and yeasty in that sense. It's not creamy, it is more kind of bready in its mouthfeel, I would definitely say that, but still very nice and smooth, which is what you want for the style. In terms of the IBUs, I think this one is probably about 40 IBUs. You know, the New England IPAs, as we said, they rely on late edition hops. They're not the most bitter of styles, but I think this one could be 40 IBUs, maybe a wee bit more at 50, not 100% sure, but you get a wee bit more bitterness out of this one the further into the aftertaste that you go. And as we said, the fruity notes in this one, it's got a lovely light kind of, um, it's got a lovely light kind of, um, tropical side of things to it but then you've got quite a lot of oily limey kind of citrusy kind of notes to it so yeah it's got a lovely fruity character to it this one but you know it's another very very solid beer from overtone brewing company and that's what we've come to expect of them and you can't really ask for much more these days there's so many new england ipas out in the market all you can ask is for another solid example of it so well done to overtone for this and i can see why this beer was highly rated. I don't know if the other ones I have are, are quite so highly rated as this. This one I think had like 4.2 nearly on untapped. So this one was pretty 
uh, up there but I enjoyed this and I think that's the, that's the main thing when it comes to tasting beer but yeah I think we can leave it at that for this one so yeah this was the captain I'm fading an 8% New England double IP from Overtone Brewing Company in yogurt through in Glasgow once again a really solid beer from these guys so this is definitely one of the Scottish breweries that you need to keep your eyes out for at the moment so um yeah once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from overtone and we will no doubt return to these guys at some point soon i will contact these guys and see if we can do a meet the brewery segment with them at some point in october that would be awesome to do so um yeah let's leave it at that for just now thank you for watching check out my social media check out overtone social media and i'll see you soon with another overtone beer review hope you guys enjoyed this one slange it skull cheers make sure you check out the captain i'm fading this is pretty nice i have to say slange it skull see you guys on the next review